Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching and may I say happy Halloween. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this Billy the Puppet themed cake from the Saw movies, so let's get right into it. I'm starting out with one 7 inch cake that I've cut in half and I'm going to be filling that with some Swiss meringue buttercream using my small offset spatula. I made a template for myself of this human head shape, so I'm just placing that right on top and just cutting that out with a knife. It's important that you don't check the pieces that you are cutting away. You will use those later, so be kind to those pieces. Taking one of my scraps, I placed it on top. You can attach it with a little bit of buttercream. I just smushed it on there. And then with my knife, I'm just cutting out a little bit more of a head for him. That didn't make sense, but you know what I mean. I want him to have more of a top of the head than what I currently have going on. Then using my knife, I'm just going over the edges of the cake and rounding them out. Using a circle cutter, I'm just going to mark in where I want the eyes to sit. And then with my knife, I'm scooping that out and also just making it a little more flush. Like I don't want that just to be like a round sunken socket. I want it to kind of blend into the cake a little bit if that makes sense. Once the eyes are good, I'm again grabbing my offset spatula and just applying a thin crumb coat on my buttercream all over my cake. I'm not putting that in the fridge like I normally would with a crumb coat because I want the buttercream to be super sticky. And then I have this cake pop mixture that I made. I just have some scraps here that I added a little bit of buttercream to. And you just want to be able to roll it in your hands and it's going to stick together. It's not going to fall apart. For the next step, I'm using my cake pop mixture and I'm going to be sculpting all of his features. So starting with his really heavy brows, I did look at a picture of his face while I was doing this and I will link the one that I used below. So I'm just rolling out these like sausagey shapes and putting those right above the eye sockets that I made. You can see that I'm blending the edges of the pieces that I put down into the cake. This is just so that when I ice the cake, it's going to look seamless. You're not going to have any big gaps or anything. And I think it makes it look way better in the end and a lot more, well, as natural as a puppet's face can be. Next, I'm rolling out two big balls for his cheeks. And again, once I place those down, I'm just blending the edges. Billy has this great big hooked nose, so I rolled out this teardrop shape and then once I placed it down, I just kind of sculpted the end to be a little bit pointed, but definitely hooked down. Think Professor Snape from Harry Potter. I was lacking in chin space, so I grabbed another one of my cutoffs and then put that against the bottom and just trimmed it to be seamless with the edges of the face. Then I just iced it like I did with the rest of the cake so it all became one and you'd never even know. I added the middle piece for his mouth so that would be moving if he was talking and then just indented it with my finger. I did not blend that middle piece in at all, but the side pieces that I added, I did blend those. It's hard to describe the shapes that I'm making, but hopefully once you look at the picture, you'll see what I'm doing. Once I had both the side pieces down, I added a little itty bitty bit underneath his nose because that's going to act as like the very top of his lip. He is severely lacking in a top lip, but it is there, so it is important to add that piece. 
I know it can be a bit tricky because the cake is dark to see all of the features that I did, but once I ice it, you will be able to see them better. So I'm just doing a very thin crumb coat on this. It's hard with the spatula to get around all the nooks and crannies, but just do the best you can. So this is what it looked like when it was all crumb coated. I put that in the fridge for about 25 minutes and then I added another thin layer of buttercream over top of that. The nice thing about this is that his face does not need to look perfectly smooth. Billy looks rough, so it doesn't really matter. I'm a little bit picky though, so I went over it with clean fingers and just kind of rubbed down any ridges that I just couldn't smooth out with my spatula. I put my cake back in the fridge to chill for about 30 minutes and then I started on my fondant. I rolled out some white on my cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick. I picked that up with my fondant roller and draped it over my chilled cake. It's really important that your cake is chilled because otherwise your cake pop mixture, all the structural stuff that you did is just gonna get smushed underneath your fondant. So now I'm just really quickly going over my entire cake and trying to define everything with my fingers. And if you find that you have any air trapped underneath your fondant, like in the eye socket area, you can just use a pin to make a little hole and then guide the air out. And then I just cut away all the excess at the bottom with my pizza cutter. Using some of my fondant tools and like a skewer and the back of my paintbrush, I just went over the lines around his mouth and then underneath his cheeks because he has this really creepy smile, so you wanna make sure you can portray that. I made a line at the very top of my middle mouthpiece and that's gonna be his lip. So once I'd gone over the whole face, it looks something like this. So now for the fun part, I have some black color dust. I put on a little piece of paper towel and then using my paintbrush, I'm going over his eye sockets and then really deepening around all the lines of his face. He has a bit of a furrowed brow going on. So making sure that's dark around and under his cheeks. And then really just going lightly, I did wash over his whole face cause he looks pretty grungy. I'm taking my finer paintbrush and going around his mouthpiece because you really want that to look like it's detached, right? So I'm really darkening those lines and then under his cheeks and into his furrowed brow and around his brows. I think it went a little too dark on the cheeks, so I went back over that later with a Q-tip just to soften that a bit. Taking a ton of my black color dust, I really concentrated that into the eye sockets to darken them. You want to make sure you kind of smudge out the edges and then taking some black food coloring gel I really wanted to darken the middle so I added that in and I ended up taking it up pretty high and then once it had dried I went back over the edges with my black color dust just to make sure I kept that smoky smoky eye look For his red face paint, I added a little bit of my red food coloring by Wilton and then a couple drops of my white food coloring and mix it together so it gives it that creamy kind of look. I'm rolling out some red fondant and then placing a piece of plastic wrap over top of that and pulling it really tight and then using the end of my piping tips, I'm cutting out two larger and two smaller circles and this just makes them more domed. see I added that small circle in first right to the middle of the eye and then I'm placing the larger one over top of that and that's just going to make sure that my eyes don't go like concave. You want to make sure they stay looking pretty domey so that little piece underneath keeps the shape. His eyes looked painted in the picture so I wanted to make sure I kept that look so I just went over them with my red food coloring mix. Then I rolled out some black fondant and using a piping tip just cut out two circles and added those into the center of my eyes. 
and I gave him a pretty mouth. I just looked at my picture and tried to paint it on to match as best I could. Again, he looks really grungy. I didn't even really grunge him up as much as I could have. You could like mark in cracks and stuff into the fondant. You could make it a lot dirtier looking than I did. So it's really like no right way to do it. I was really nervous to do the swirls on his cheek because I was afraid of messing up. So I found the best way to do it was I took the back of my fondant tool and just traced out where I wanted the swirl to be. I just pressed really lightly. So if I messed that up, I could just smooth it out with my finger and start again. So once I had the shape down, then I went over that once with the color, just then I didn't worry about it. And then once I had the right shape, I went over it again just to thicken up the line. For the hair, I just added some black fondant. I rolled it out really long and draped it on either side. And then I just used a skewer to mark in the lines and just make the ends look a little more rough. To make his bow tie, I'm rolling out more of my red fondant and then cutting out this rectangle shape. I'm pushing up underneath the fondant in the middle and then pinching that together and then doing the same thing on either side and then just bringing both of the ends into the middle. I added a strip of fondant into the center of that and then just trimmed off the excess at the back and voila, little bow tie. So this is what he looked like when he was done. I loved how he turned out. I can barely watch the Saw movies, so it's pretty funny that I made this. But I really wanted to make another Halloween video for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel for new videos every week.